well. Amen. There are times we don't realize you're here to your history. And sometimes we just acknowledge you're here by faith, but Father, we proclaim that you're here, Father. Yes, Lord. And Father, for each person that knows that you're here, Father, tug on them a little bit. Let them know, Father, that you love them, Father. A lot of churches have people go around and hug each other, Father. I pray that you would that you would hug on your kids tonight. You let each person here know they're not an accident. They're they're not an extra in a movie. They are they are the apple of your eye. Yes. The star that's in your hand. That you love them, Father. Each one of them so much. That you shed tears when they shed tears. You rejoice when they rejoice. You're more faithful than a brother. You're a, yes. a friend that's more faithful than a brother. And Father, we thank you, Lord, if that's a relationship that can never be ended. You're there for us, even if we're not there for you. Yes. Father, we thank you for your love and for your presence tonight. Thank you for touching each person here, Father. <laughs> Don't let them leave here without refreshing. Refreshing, Lord. <coughs> In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Light ministry to somebody back there. There we go. <laughs> Hey. We got all kinds of ministries, ain't we? Man. Praise God. It'd be one more thing I'd have to go do. Amen. Uh, praise God. I'm trying to decide how we're going to do what we're going to do. We know what we're going to do, but we ain't sure to let go. We want to look at a couple of scriptures, and I, I suppose I can throw them up here on the board right quick. I guess I gotta shut that. There we go. Love came down, rescued me. He sought me when I didn't even know to look for him. He did. He's been a very good God. I've been. Uh, I encourage you to uh, read your Bibles, listen to Bibles, do whatever you do. I've been listening to First Samuel this week. I've listened to First Samuel two, two and a half times. Just you know, MP3 download off the internet, and I've been listening to Samuel and about Saul and about David, and they're just things I can't tell you what all God's doing on the inside, but He's doing something. Yeah. He's, he's doing he's doing something. I can't tell you what it is yet. But I remember saying that years ago. And what came out was wonderful. So I get the feeling that when God starts putting the word in, he's working on something wonderful. Amen. And whatever God opens you to, oh, somebody's been sent me a text, but they love me. Well, all right. Nice <laughs> now, let me get back out of here. It wasn't me. Oh, oh, it's I don't mine. know. It's Michael. It's mine. <laughs> Good Lord, wasn't it? Yeah. And yeah, that's what it was. This came through somebody. <laughs> but uh, I need that. I need Bible. I bring my Bible up here. Everybody's rejoicing with those who rejoice. That's what everybody's doing. I want to give you a couple of scriptures. This one's in 1 John, and it's chapter 4. I listen back to tapes of how we used to do it. I used to put the Bible verses on one of the projectors and shoot it on the wall, one little page. You know, that was high tech stuff, man. Yeah. We, we had gotten up to school. So we had a little projector thing and doing these deals. All right, I'm in John instead of 1st John. We'll go 1st John. There we go. In chapter 5. The message not, may not be what you think it is, so just hang on tight. And 1st John 4 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, spirit. but try the spirits. Whether they are of God. Amen. Why would you have to do that? Well, it's just going to tell us. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So, if Jesus said it, I just believe it's true. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's a good point. Yeah. I, I just believe he's right. That, that because there, because it didn't say one or two. It said many false prophets are gone out into the world. And hereby know you the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. God. Now, what's that mean in modern version? It means that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. 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 Okay? And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus has come in the flesh, I don't care what they say they are, is not of, not of, God. Not of God. Make it a little bigger. 
is not of God. That'll work right there. Yeah. And then it says this right here. They're not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist. Antichrist doesn't just mean against Christ. But it means real close here. You know, the dictionary says an opponent of, but it doesn't just mean against. It can mean in place of, opposite of, instead of. Okay? See what it's saying there? Yes. And rarely it can mean in addition to. Huh. It won't add anything to what Jesus has done, do you? No. See, a spirit of Antichrist can be against him, it can be in place of him, or it can't even be alongside of him. That's right. Now, that's, and we're not going to get into big prophecy tonight, but we're going to show you a couple of things, and then we're going to move on to uh, what God wants to do. If God wants to uh, use one more scripture. Jesus said this one out of his own lips. It's in Matthew uh, chapter 7. Just trying to get everybody the same place at the same time. I still prefer reading it off the paper myself. But it ain't all about me. It's about getting everybody to one place at one time with one version of the Bible. And that is hard to do unless you yes. do this. because. And we want to look down in about verse. Well, I think it's about 15. Oh, that's the verse everybody, the only verse they know in the Bible, isn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. That's, uh, I touched the wrong button. We need 7, 15, not 7. And then we need verse 15. There we go. There we are. And, and here it goes right here, and it says, Enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be... Is that what it says there? Yeah. Yes. And, 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 and let's say, and many there be that go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and it doesn't mean, uh, you know, it's straight like a railroad track. It means straight like a narrow. You know, it's, it's tight. It's constricted. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to life. And we better get that over here so you can see how many find it. It doesn't say, yeah. it says few, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say a whole lot of things, but I'm stuck with what Jesus said. And he said that there'll be few that find it. And then he says this right here, like maybe this is attached to it. Beware of oh. prophets. Not just prophets. Now see, that's what the Baptists do. They're just oh, beware of prophets. <laughs> they don't have that spooky stuff. You know? <laughs> we don't think about Baptists, but we can say Church of Christ too. We can say, yeah, a whole lot of people, they beware of prophets. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're the original non-profit generation. Yeah. And, and you know, and I just hide as a pastor, but I'm a prophet. You know, I know stuff about people we don't tell. I just got it's a gift. Thank you. But yeah. I operate as a as a pastor because pastors are less scary <laughs> than prophets <laughs> because most everybody's the original non-profit organization. We don't want no prophets. Prophets, you know. They're like John the Baptist. They smell funny. They look funny. You know, they just not. They don't go on Sunday morning. They don't wear a tie. You know, they just don't cooperate well. But prophets like John the Baptist, they point to the Lamb of God Amen. that takes away Wait. the yeah. sin of the world. Yeah. Amen. And there's a lot of false, false prophets. prophets. Now, all prophets are not good. Come on. See, a real prophet would point to who? Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Now, and right. a false prophet might point you to something else. That's right. Like themselves. Yep. Or like down. the wrong road. Or like mm -hmm. some other way. Other than the highway. Then Jesus way. But behold the false prophets which come to you. Now it didn't say beware of false prophets that wear little moony outfits and stand at the airport. <laughs> I'm being honest. He's writing to the church. He's not writing That's to the right. lost and dying world out here. He's not telling them beware of these freaks. Oh, I shouldn't have said it that way. He's not telling them to beware. He's telling church people, you better beware because there's some false ones out there. Yes, there's some real ones, but there's some freaky ones out there too. Yeah, there is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I look funny. There's some freaky ones out there. He didn't see, and, you know, he says and they're going to come to you. Yes. yes. They're going to tell you God told them all about you in the letter and, and read down through here, and I saw you praying in your shirt or blouse. 
You know, I got one of them one time. He didn't know if I had a shirt or a blouse. He didn't know if I was a man or a woman, but he had a word of God for me. Not necessarily so. But I was baby in this kind of stuff. And when you're a baby in the, in the Lord, you just kind of look at him. But that stuck out to me, and I thought, hmm. Mm. Yeah. He didn't see all that he thought. And then I went through a period of time where I collected all the junk mail I got and all the plastic hands you put your hand in to pray for people and all the paper floor mats that you put your knee prints with a prophet and put their knee prints. All of them, all kinds of stuff. I mean, water, oil, salt. You ever got salt in the mail? You're supposed to put salt in your mouth, you know, so many days and then on the third day and some day. All of them mean something to somebody somewhere. And, but beware, these are coming to you. Amen. Well, I got a word for that man. Right, right. But they come in sheep's clothing. Now, see, anybody can dress up like a sheep, mm. but only a real sheep's a sheep from the inside. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's true, isn't it? Yes, sir. And but notice that they they come like the old cartoons. Yeah. Where, they, where they dress up with little sheepskin on the wood wood and go out there and try to steal the sheep. You know? And we just laughed at it as kids, but I learned more spiritual truth out of that cartoon than I've learned yes, out of a lot of Because yes. yes. a lot of people's hung on, don't judge, don't judge. Only Bible verse we know is from the days. Don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. Well, you got to watch that not judge it because that's what's wrong with this world, people. they got no judgment. But notice when they come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, where you can't see, mm -hmm. inwardly, they are ravening what? Whoa. Now, ravening is one of them words that I don't know if it means hungry or not, but I'll look for the sake of a moment. There's a Lord, what a word. They got extortion and ravening, and it comes from the root word that means to seize. Yeah. Hmm. They want to seize you. I think catch away, pluck. Take by force. It sure seems like they're not very friendly people, even though they come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. And Jesus said, You shall know them by their fruits. Now, see, fruits are not on the inside necessarily, are they? If you could see the inside of them, you'd tell they was a wolf and not a sheep. But he said you're going to be able to tell what's on the inside by what's growing yeah. on the outside. We've got a whole society, including the church, that says don't judge, don't judge, don't judge, don't pay no attention to that fruit hanging off of them. Inside, they're sweet. It's not what Jesus said. And it's going to get better. We're not picking on people. But understand, no matter how much fake fruit you got hanging on the outside, you can't change what's on the inside. That's right. right. And, and, and I'm going to get ahead of myself if I'm not careful, but I'm going to get ahead of myself and I'm going to tell you that that, that doggone fig tree got in trouble for looking like it was That's fruitful enough yeah. having no yeah. fruit. Yeah. And yeah. Jesus cursed that thing down to the root of it. That's right. right. And Never I still think people again. feel sorry for the fig tree. Right. Like, what did it do? It pretended. It pretended. Just exactly. <laughs> okay. And so... You shall know them by their fruits Do men gather grapes of thorns. Well, you know, blackberries maybe, but not no grapes, okay? Yes. Things of thistles. Well, absolutely not. Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. Okay? Then it says a good tree cannot bring forth good fruit, neither can a corrupt tree do the other. And everyone that doesn't bring forth fruit is, what is that, verse 19? Uh, Every fruit that brings forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And we don't want to wind up there, do we? No. Then it says, by their fruits you shall no. know them. And then That's we can right. say, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, enters into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And then people get all hung up going, I don't know if I'm saved. I don't know if I'm saved. He wasn't talking about Christians. He was talking about what? False right. prophets. Okay, you got to know who it's talking to when you're doing these things. Now we're going to do something else just a moment. We're going to go to Acts chapter, uh, whatever I had there, 26, maybe. I got it marked. Acts 26, yeah. I'm going to go to Acts 26, and then I'm going to tell you what the message is. Because we're safe right now. We're picking on false prophets. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We're all against false prophets. Uh -oh. Yes, sir. Yeah, be careful because it's going to take a turn in a minute. 
Yeah, and he, right? Acts 26. Acts 26. And about verse 25. 25. And I'm going to tell you a dream God gave me. God gives me dreams. You know, whether it's old, the young men have, see visions, and old men have dreams, or vice versa, I can't remember, but I have both of them. And uh, I had this dream the other morning, and I had this dream, and I thought it wasn't a God dream, but I just thought it was a dream. Because you have weird dreams sometimes. Everything yes. that you hear is not God. Everything that you dream is not God. Right. Everything that you imagine is not God. You know, back in the 60s, people was taking LSD to find themselves. Now we go to weird <laughs> church services so that we can experience things that are beyond the Bible. And that is scary uh, stuff because I don't want to, I, I want God to reveal. Amen. Right. Amen. To me. Reveal. Not take me some weird place somewhere that just don't explain, okay? I, I, I lived there before I got saved. Now I don't want to go back. All right. All right, so let me just, I said that to say this. So I had this dream, and in this dream, there was these uh, young guys, and, and one of them was explaining how they got in the situation they were in. What it was is uh, they got them an internet site, and they, they did some things with cars, you know, high tech on cars and stuff, and had pictures and little pieces of videos, and they had little sound bites about stuff that made it sound like they really understood what they were talking about. Okay? trying to build a following. You do that online. You try to build, get followers, build up to do all these things. And they were confessing. They said that here we were trying to gain credibility by acting like we knew things that we didn't know. Insinuating that we were bigger than we were. You know, given the insinuation that there were more of us than they were and that we were really on to something that nobody else had. Okay? Uh, that was pretty much, and the guy was confessing it. And he said, you know, the problem was that people that really knew something about something, people that really knew something about the new technology that's coming and the things, that, you know, automotive things, they thought we were frauds. Fakes. And he said... Because we tried to make credibility that we didn't have, we lost our credibility, and we became, uh, let me see how to say this, the man said in the dream, we went from gifted amateurs to looking like fools. Because we professed to have what we didn't possess. Okay? And I still don't know it's a God dream because I'm just thinking like, I don't care about this stuff. This is all over the internet. I see people all the time that profess to have stuff that they don't really. Yeah. That's the car dream right there. Uh, you know, that's what they're, they're putting out like they were more than they really were. They wanted to sound like they were doing great things to increase their credibility. Uh, it basically came down to fake it till you make it. Yeah. If, I, if I look like an expert... They'll, they'll treat me like it. And they didn't realize that some of their stuff even looked criminal when they got done. And that was all fine. And I'm going along with it, going along with it. And, and then we come down to, to what God had to say about it. Uh, they were using the internet, the pictures, the videos to create an illusion, okay? And that's what false prophets do. They use all the different things available to uh, look like they have fruit that they don't have. Okay? So we are so far. So then yesterday God started to explain it to me. He started to explain to me false prophets versus uh, spirits that prophesize falsely. And so a while ago it was real simple to figure out who a false prophet was. And then God started to show me that there are true people that really do believe, but they slide over into becoming <coughs> false prophets. Mm -hmm. Huh? Now what I mean by that, the person may actually be saved. They may be called of God. But yet when they get out here and start to, to minister and try to accomplish what God has called them to do, they slide over into false prophecy by doing the same things those car guys were doing, trying to look like they have more than they have, look like they have more anointing, mm -hmm. 
Uh, you see what I'm saying there? Look like you're something that you're not until you suddenly get it and all of a sudden you'll be real. Okay? I lost y'all there, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Church is full of it. Faking it till you're making it. Well, that's not the same thing as if God says he's going to bless you and you go around saying what God says about it. That's one thing. But putting on a front is as false as false prophets are. And this is what God called it. God said to project something that you don't possess, okay? To project something that you don't possess is to prophesy falsely. And I know very few people that would on purpose go around and say, I tell you what, thus saith the Lord, and just make something up. Mm -hmm. I hope they got more sense than that. And yet, we project that we have something that we don't possess. And God told me that is the same thing as to prophesy falsely. We wouldn't dare be false prophets, but sometimes we project that we got peace that we ain't got. Right. Mm. Amen? Amen? Sometimes we project that we got faith that we ain't in possession of. And that confuses the people that you're trying to minister to in His name because you're trying to say, Hear me, hear, and you don't got no fruit. Hear what I'm saying? It'll get better in a minute. To project something that you don't possess is to prophesy falsely. And no, we're not talking about saying what God says, okay? He called me to preach when I couldn't talk. I couldn't minister, but I was still called. That's not, but to project that you've arrived when you ain't left the starting gate. You're a worldwide minister and you ain't went out of the parking lot. Amen. But on the internet, you can be anything well, that's true. That's true. that you want to be. And, and it gets confused where people say, I'm saying this stuff on faith. And what you're really doing is you're not building up God. You're building up yourself, hoping that God will back it up. Nobody we know. To express what you don't possess, whew, uh, is to, uh, let's say, to express what you don't possess is to impress. And whenever we're speaking things, to impress the people or the donors. Huh? Or the sick and the hurting or whatever. You're professing to have something you're not in possession of. God calls that false. That is that fig tree that has leaves, but it ain't got no fruit. You're better off to wait till God gives you some fruit and then say, come eat of my fruit, than to project that you've got fruit. Now, if we put a sign out there and we said, free turkey dinner. What if it's like the toys? We'd have 700 people. <laughs> well, we ain't got no turkey dinner. We're going to order it if y'all come. Yeah. <laughs> See what we're saying? We're projecting something. Well, I don't know how many times we've had Eaton's and had way too much food left because the people that we projected to, we had the food, but they didn't come. But we wouldn't, we wouldn't know that falsely. To express what you don't possess, I'm going to let you know you're not going to have to lie to minister for God. That's, right. Right. That's what I'm going to tell you here That's in a minute. Right. Right. To express what you don't possess, that's not good. That's just to impress. That ain't going to work. And uh, let's see what that says there. If you project an intimacy with God that you don't possess yourself, That's right. you become not a witness, you become a false prophet. Amen. You hear me there? Yeah. We're trying to let on to somebody else how holy. Yeah. That's right. Amen? That's right. He's holy enough for us without projecting that we're holy. You hear me? That's not, it's not necessary for me to project something I'm not to lift him up. Right. That's real true. Mm -hmm. This is going to help you when you get done because God's not calling you to, to give anything you don't have. But to, to there are plenty of people acting like they got this, this telephone line. Well, they went telephone. Mm -hmm. I guess they're getting texts from God now. Because they're too busy to read the Bible. I guess God has to send it to them over the internet or something. they got this great intimacy with God. And they don't really have it. But they're, pro they're professing to draw people that don't know they can hear from God for themselves. And I'll cross over everybody in the room over and over and over. But I'll let you on the secret. You can hear from God. Amen. And I won't always be here. You won't either. And God wants to talk to you. Because he loves you. He cares for you. 
He don't want you to get hung up on the gift. He's the giver. And so to project you've got an intimacy you don't have is to be a false. Whew. And to, have, to, to, to project that you've got this connection with God is special. And I'm, I'm special and so is yours. Yeah. But, to, but we're the only way. <laughs> we won't even talk about that. <laughs> people get to heaven and they won't let them look over on that side of the hill because then people think they're the only ones there. I've heard that about several different denominations. And not yours. I've heard it about several of them. There's several that think they're the only people going to be there. That if you're going to come to God, the only way to come, that's not like a cult. The only way in is through us. No, that's profession, a connection that you don't have possession of. The way is open. Amen. Uh, so to, to profess that you've got a relationship that you don't really have, just because you go around calling God daddy doesn't mean you've got a daddy relationship with God. Right. And I'm old-fashioned, but dear Lord, he's still God. He's your heavenly father. Amen. And I don't even talk to my daddy like that. And I'm supposed to go around and go, oh, daddy. Oh, da well, I know he's Abba, but that's for private moments. That's not going down the street and talking to everybody in moves going, he's my, he's my Abba daddy. He's my Abba daddy. Some people look, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> right. Everything ain't awesome either. Only God is. And, but I'm just trying to be honest with you here. But see, that we use words to kind of project this thing that I'm so close to God and He's Papa and He's this. And we use all these silly words. And you know what I mean? I was close to God when I didn't even know His name. I couldn't decide who to pray to. I tried. I, wrote my prayers in those days. I prayed on paper. I didn't know there was such a thing as journaling. I just prayed on paper. Found out I journaled. I didn't know that. And I couldn't decide who to pray to because I didn't want to offend the Father, the Son, or the Holy Ghost. Because if it's like my family, they would be fighting the most. Which one are you praying to? <laughs> so I decided to pray to the Lord because that was generic. And they could fight amongst themselves and decide which one I was talking to. <laughs> that was really what I thought. I didn't know. But, to, but we see we can do a lot of different things to project that I got this real close relationship with him when really our heart is not there. There are days you don't feel like saying Abba, 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 Papa, Papa, Papa. And the more times somebody else says it, you think, dear Lord, grow up and get past your toddler stage and talk to him like a real person because God knows who you are. And he knows if you're in a daddy mode or you're in a, a mode where daddy means, means a bad word to you and not a great word. It doesn't necessarily make you come into this great, wonderful relationship. You feel like, oh, dear God, I don't need one of them. Uh, somebody one time was going to be a spiritual father one time. And they didn't know what a spiritual father really was. They were going around being somebody's daddy. We don't need nobody to holler at us. Man, we had that at all. We don't need nobody to follow us around and holler at us in Jesus' name. You know, I don't got no, that's control. But notice, to, to see the, an idea that we got this relationship that we don't possess. We heard somebody on a tape had that relationship. The people down at that church, they got this relationship. So, but you ain't really got that relationship, so quit hiding behind that and be honest about where you really are. Amen? Or we're becoming false prophets. Right. To, to, us, to, to project that I've got some empowering, miracle power. And God does do miracles. And I've had him do miracles. And I don't care if he does them or <coughs> he does them with prayer circle. But I want you to know that to project you got something, <coughs> huh? Mm -hmm. If you really got it, you ain't got to flaunt it. That's right. You hear me? Yeah. And, and I'm just being honest with you. Uh, all the rules on how to build a church and go into ministry come very simply. You dress to look. That's the same thing they tell you to sell the real estate. Right, right. <laughs> and life insurance. Get a better car than you can afford so that people will think you're successful because everybody wants to deal with somebody that's successful. But you know, the true ministry is not that way. It doesn't make any difference what you like on the outside. God enjoys sneaking up on people. <laughs> he enjoys stealth. He enjoys the outside having no resemblance to the God that's on the inside because even Jesus didn't have anything about him that would make you desire him. That's what it says. Yeah. People were not drawn to Jesus because he was, you know, I hate to say Brad Pitt, but pick somebody like that. I don't think Jesus was on every magazine that went by. Huh? Right. I don't think he was. See, Jesus didn't have to project he had any of these things because he had every one of them. Amen. Amen. Who's in you? Jesus. 
So we don't have to say I got a special connection or a special some kind of miracle working or a connection like this power. <laughs> and you know, you know well as I do, God moves in that power. Yeah. But to profess to profess to know or to imply no, or to be more than you know or more than you are makes you in the false prophet category. There's nothing wrong with saying I don't know. No. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with praying over people and, and getting to somebody and saying, I don't know. I had a word for that person, but I don't got to thank you. I can make something up if you want me to. Mm. You know, nobody ever takes me up on that when I get to that bar. <laughs> That's honest. You might as well be honest. If you don't have nothing, you don't That's right. have, have nothing. That's right. But people, when they start out in the ministry, they feel obligated <clears throat> to have something. We don't. See, that's, see how that goes. What we want to do is realize that we don't want to slide into the false prophet category. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Teaching on marriage while yours is falling apart. Well, if you're doing that on faith because God told you to, you'll do it in faith. Fear and trembling. But you're going to stand before God. But how many times it's not that way at all. It's just a projection of something that we're not in possession of. Amen. Now, several things I want to say about that. And one of them is that God doesn't want you to have a profession of peace. He wants to give you peace. peace. You understand what I'm saying? He's not wanting to disqualify you from talking for him. He's wanting to give you something so that you've got something to say. And something that flows out of you, not because you're sitting here trying to force it out, but because, amen? amen. Ain't nothing worse than trying to talk to somebody about love and you ain't got none. You know, I can tell you theoretically about love, but that ain't the same thing. Amen. He doesn't want us to be professors. Oh, I said a professor, he's about that big. He, Gilligan's Island type professor. He doesn't intend for us to be that. He intends that he wants to give you possession of things that you've never had in your life so that they can flow out of you when you come into somebody that has that need. Right. So that's different. Because I can walk around and not be perfect. Amen? That's what I'm saying. See, a false prophet has sheep's clothing. They're hiding what they really are. Okay? Somebody that's moving in the Spirit of God we don't got to hide who we really... Right. I'll show you that in a minute. But say this, he wants you to possess some peace. And not just pass it to somebody else. He wants you to possess wholeness. And not just be trying to pray for people. See what I'm saying? He wants you to possess comfort. God says that we're to comfort other people like he comforts yeah. us. Yeah. And we skip that step. Right. can't skip that step. We're not trying to make everybody false prophets. We're trying to say, why don't people really see Jesus? And they don't really see Jesus because we're projecting. Not on purpose sometimes. Sometimes it's on purpose. This is what I'm supposed to say. This is what I... How you doing? Doing fine. God's taking care of me. He's faithful. And inside you just go... We slid into false. See what I'm saying? Not... We call it faith sometimes when we become projectors and false because God doesn't want you to grit your teeth and bear it. He wants to give you the real possession of the real thing. So that you got something. Is that all right? Yeah. I'll show it to you in the scripture here in a minute. I want to show you how to get free enough so that you can, you can have a problem as big as their problem or bigger and still share Jesus with them. Amen. And not be a hypocrite. Right. And not be false. That's easy. Is that alright? And, and to do that, i got to turn the Bible verse back on. And go back over to Acts 26. I saw this quite a few years ago and I was reminded of it last week. A few days ago. And when I was reminded of it, I went, wow. That's as good as it was the first time I ever saw it. Alright. And I don't think I've ever heard anybody preach it in my life. And uh, that don't mean nothing. It just means a lot of things I, that I see and hear and preach, I ain't never heard nobody preach them. They will tomorrow. They'll be on a big TV thing and people think I stole it from them. You used to aggravate me so much. Yeah. God would give me something and then somebody on TV would say it. I couldn't say it no more about that. You got that from TV Jakes. No, I yeah. had 10 years ahead of him. But I'll tell you what it did do. It made me believe TD Jakes could hear from God because I got it from the same place. Yes, yeah. thank God. you. I got, a, I got a teaching on it that God uh, turns negatives to positives. Yes. Come on now. In his dark room. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it comes from an experience I had in the, I was in the bedroom and I was really depressed and discouraged and things in my life were not the way they're supposed to be in the ministry wasn't the way it's supposed to be. And God had told me to leave one church and he would give me another one. And there was a year and a half gap in between that. It was like walking through hell. It was a horrible place to be walking through. And and I was laying there and I and I laying on the bed and I, I had this vision. Of course I didn't call it a vision in them days because I didn't know what visions was. And I was laying there and I saw this one light bulb hanging down from the ceiling. You know how them old houses oh, had one bulb with a string. And it wasn't on, but I could see that it was there. And I reached up my hand to pull that string. And I heard the voice of God say, you can turn the light on and know what I'm doing if you want to, but it'll ruin everything and I'll have to start over. Dark feeling. Yeah. And as much as I wanted to know what God was doing, I did not want to start this mess over. And I let go. And I went. And then God told me that He turns negatives to pictures. Yeah. In the full yes. color glossies. Yes. But He does it in His dark room. Good, good. And I heard T.D. Jakes preach it. Ten years later, and I went, I can't preach that one no more. Yeah. So, God gave it to him too. I yeah. bet you he walked through a dark place. Come on now. That I bet you right the there. same God that told me told him. Yes. Well, so sometimes I preach stuff ahead of time, but that's all right. It's still from God, isn't it? Yes. But you understand that? How many times you want to turn that on? Oh, I don't want to start over. And I wouldn't be where I am now if I'd have turned that light on then. We'd have had to go all through this again. I'm not young enough to go through all this mess of and we talked the other night. We couldn't minister the same the other night. We just had a couple of people and had a lot of kids. I couldn't minister on fear the way I would minister on fear with with, with a lot of people. Uh, in that same house, I had another thing with God where I was laying on the bed and I just couldn't hardly breathe. Felt like felt like a, I don't think it was a heart attack feeling because it wasn't no pain. It just felt like I couldn't hardly breathe. And it was during that same period of that struggle of leaving that church where I was somebody and going someplace where I wasn't. Yeah, I got to preach on a Wednesday night to almost 300 people, and you go from that to nothing. Mm. That's hard to let go of. Mm. Why'd you leave? Is you mad? No, God told me to leave, or it would destroy me. So everybody thinks, oh, there's something wrong down there. There's something wrong with them people. See, thank you, what you get started on Facebook for that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just because it would destroy me ain't got nothing to do with them people. That's it right. was probably I wasn't ready for that kind of stuff. It probably would have destroyed the ministry God has for me. Wow. Nothing to do with them people. Just because God told you, they don't mean nothing wrong with them. It just ain't right for you. That's right. That's right. But it was a struggle, and and there I was. Trying to find a church to go to. God wouldn't tell me there's no place to go. That's how we wound up in the nursing home one night uh, and prayed for that guy and uh, and uh, Miss Jackie's husband. And uh, he confessed, you know, the Lord. And, and we had that, you know, thing here. And we prayed for him to get well. But God had sent me over there because I was bugging him. I've got to go to church somewhere. And he didn't. He said, well, go there and pray for them. So I did. Then he died, and I felt really bad about it. Because I thought, God sent me, and I prayed, and he died anyway. And then found out later that she was so happy, it's the first time she'd ever heard him confess Jesus as a sinner. There you That's go. why God sent me over there. That's right, man. But during those times of growing so that I can tell you these kind of things, during those times, I was laying on the bed, and I had that big heavy thing laying on me, and I heard God say, resist fear. See, fear says God won't finish the process. He'll get you out here. He won't finish it. Amen? Well, we know that Jesus said you better count ahead of time if you're going to go to war. Make sure you've got enough people. If you're going to build a tower. Make sure you've got enough money. But yeah. to God, the universe is going to get you out and not be able to bring you back. But boy, it feels like it when he goes taking layers off. And you say, I sure hope he puts his back. Because I look good to other people there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and now it don't even look good to me. Amen? Ain't you glad? And so I was laying there and he said, resist fear. And I said, fear, no. He hadn't done that like that, had he? Yeah. Resist yeah. discouragement. Discouragement. Go and live, Jesus. Yeah. Like that guy in the Old Testament told him to beat the ground with the arrows. That's right. Oh, there you go. You know, and, you know, we do that. We're using the name, but we ain't got no if and in it. And so here we are. Fear, no. So he opened my eyes. 
I had an open vision. That didn't really sound good. Tessa, I have open visions. I built a big crowd with open visions. That means I just saw it in the daylight. I wasn't asleep. It don't mean you're special. It means you're so dense that God had to show it to you with your eyes. <laughs> so all this spiritual stuff ain't as spiritual. If I believe what he said in the Bible, he wouldn't have to show it to me. <laughs> and you know what I'm doing. I'm making it so it's easy for you to understand. Taking that special away. Yes, respect leaders. Yes, pray for leaders. Yes, Honor the anointing that's on them. But that's a key word, anointing that's on them. Because when the anointing wears off and they go home, they're just like you. You're they're just right. like me. And they got problems too. No wonder Amen. they do goofy stuff. Amen. You do goofy stuff. Amen. Amen. All right. So, so we're not trying to bring them down. We're trying to say that you're not going to kind of project that you're at a level. You're not. Is why they get hung and then crash. And everybody says they were false and they may not be any more false right. than you are. It's just that they were flying higher than they had jet fuel to keep them rolling. Oh, you know what I mean? And, you, know, and you, you can't never tell nobody in the Lord that you're just going to slow down because God told you to slow down. No, you have to say, I'm going to this newer, greater level. You know, don't go no higher in your parachute. You know what I mean? You know, right. you know, you know don't get someplace that God. I don't know how many places went out because they rent a building bigger than they can afford. Yeah. And call it faith. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And we may not have done much. We've been going 26 years, guys. I don't know if we've had four or five buildings. We've went 26 years. We have started over on how many times with different people. We get down to a few, and God takes it back. And we've done this for 26 years coming up March the 6th. 26 years. And you look at it, and people go, you started yesterday. Yes, we did. We did this start yesterday. Again, what are you going to do tomorrow? We'll start over again. If the furniture right. is next week, you'll know we right. start over again. Right. Because, because the deal is to be where God's doing and not where he was. That's right. So, so let's take this back. Now, I was laying there and I was resisting fear like we do. There you go. <laughs> huh? You don't know nothing about that, do you? Yeah. He opened my eyes and I had this open vision and it was open all right. There was a darn tick that big on my chest. He showed me what fear looked like. Mm -hmm. And what fear was doing. It was sucking the blood and the life out of me. And I didn't have any problem rebuking that thing with some yeah. intensity. Get it now. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Nearly. In Jesus name. Yeah. And I mean, it was gone. Yeah. Now see what I'm saying. These deep spiritual experiences are not because we're so great. It's because God's trying to take us to a place. Yes. And like I said, my ministry is to minister to people that you can go to where God's called you to go, and He'll take you there. And you can don't let yourself get disqualified by the fact that you're human. Oh, praise God. You know what I mean? Or you got a past. That's right. There you go. <clears throat> I want to show you this out of Scripture. Did I get it there? This is Paul speaking before King Agrippa. I'm just saying all this because I love y'all. I love God. This there's there are everybody wants to say what a great ministry they have. You'll tell all that when you get to heaven. You'll find out what was built right, for Him right. and what was. And I'm not saying right. that people, if I say things like that, people say it's because you don't have much. I've got one thing. I've got. I've done what God's asked me to do, Amen. Right. and I don't right. add to it to try to inflate. You understand what I'm saying? We don't want to inflate, but I want you to know that that God really desires. See, God's told me many times. He says, you're not judged in heaven for what you accomplished on the earth. It's That's for right. what you did when I asked you asked to, to do. do. Amen. Amen. And he asked us to do stuff that, that he doesn't necessarily ask other people to do or they don't hear. I don't know. But he, <laughs> I, I, I'm only responsible for what he asked me right. to do. And I tell you, anybody can walk in God and anybody can increase in the anointing because your, your, your problems that are, your, your things that are disses and will hold you back there are things that God can turn and use and cause his glory to come on. And you don't got to project that you're sinless for God to use you. Right. You don't got to project that you get as holy as I am. God can use you with all y'all in a world of trouble. You know, because we ain't going to get as holy. We got the holy one. Amen. Yes. Amen. So I'm going to show you this. This is this is he's, he's, this is Paul defending himself before King Agrippa. Okay, and we could go through the whole thing, but uh, I'd rather read it off of here personally. But I'm going to put the verse up I'm after, and then I'll just read it because I'd rather read it. That's just because because I can catch it from my from my angle easier, and. Uh, 
verse 29 is what I'm after. So I'll put 29 up there, but I'll read you down to it. And this really sets me free. And the only thing I can help you to be free with is what God gives to set me free. And uh, and, and this is the deal here. Uh, in Acts... Paul's going to tell his story is what he's going to do. And, and then I'm just going to read it to you here. And then Agrippa said to Paul, you're permitted to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and answered and said, I think myself happy, O King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day according to all the things where I'm accused of the Jews. And then it comes on down and says, especially because you're an expert in all the customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, you know, hear me patiently. Then he tells, he says, My manner of life from my youth, first among my own nation at Jerusalem, known to all the Jews. You know, they know his life. It was around him. And, and then he comes on down and says, I now stand and am judged for the hope of the promise that God made unto our fathers. And, you know, that's Jesus, isn't it? And then he drops on down and talks to King Griffin and says, Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I barely thought the same myself, that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Which thing I did also in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, and having received authority from the chief priest, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. This is Paul talking about all those things, okay? He says, and I punished them oft, or often in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them. That same spirit's still around this world, isn't it? Yes. And I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest. And at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven. And above the brightness of the, above the, the light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me, and then which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Why do you persecute me? It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. And I said, who are you, Lord? He knew who he was. Yeah. He didn't know his name, did he? Yeah. And he said, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. That same Jesus can do that in Syria right now. I don't care what nobody says. That same right. Jesus can do that. He said, I am Jesus whom you persecute, but rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of these things which you have seen and the things which I will appear unto you, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom... whom now I send you to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. Wasn't that a commission? That they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Jesus has a good word for him. Right? Yeah. Wherefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but showed first to them in Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meant or able for repentance. And for these cause the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained the help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing to both small and great. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where key ministry is, small and great. Right, right. And saying none other things than which the prophets and Moses uh, did say should come, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first to rise from the dead. And should show uh, light to his people and the Gentiles. And as he thus spoke for himself, Festus, not the one from this one. I had trouble when I got to the Bible. The time I see Festus, I think of the cowboy hat and Matt Dillon. And, and then, wow, I had no idea Festus was a Bible name. Rhoda either, guys. I had no idea. I was Rhoda. in the 70s yeah. on television. I had no idea. But those were Bible names. And thus he spoke for himself. And Festus said with a loud voice, that still sounds funny, Paul, you're beside yourself. Much learning has made you mad. And he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus. That still sounds funny to me. But speak forth the words of truth and soberness. And the king knows all these things for whom, before whom I speak freely. And I am persuaded that none of these things are <laughs> taken from him. But this thing was not done in a corner.
corner. Right. And then he puts it on the money. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that you believe. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Almost you persuade me to be a Christian. And I feel condemned when people don't believe when I say something. The Apostle Paul couldn't convince him in that place. <laughs> but notice here. Amen. Notice what his answer is. And he said, almost you persuade me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but all that hear me this day were both almost and all together. See, we think it's all done when God's just got an almost. That means he's going to get you all together done later. Right. <laughs> Both almost and all together, such as I am, except, you catch the phrase there, yeah. such as I am, except these bonds. Is that what it says? Yeah. All together, yeah. such as I am, except for these bonds. bonds. Do you know the liberty that comes when you're able to witness to somebody and say this right here? That I, I, I want you to believe in the one that called me more than you believe the one that's speaking to you. That's right. Mm. That I want you to believe on him and I want you to have everything that I have in him. I want you to have everything that's I've right. experienced in him. But I don't want you to have the baggage that I'm carrying. Yeah. Right. I don't want you to have my chains. I don't want you to have my hang-ups. I don't. And see, that takes the thing the devil can use to disqualify you, and you turn it in to, I want you to have all he said you could have, except for this that you see on the outside. This whole thing. See what we're saying? You see what we're saying? That, that right there is saying that you may be nervous and have a nervous problem, but you can say, I want you to have all the peace that Jesus died to give you. I want you to be just like me. Except for this thing that God's God. still dealing. I want you to have all that God's got for you, except for this little bit of doubt I got that I just can't seem to shake off of because it seemed like I was born with it. And I can't see me walking in while I can see you walking in. I can see God setting you free, but I can't see me getting free from these darn things that's been on my life. You see what we're saying? That you're able to take the thing. You're not a false prophet. You're not promising something you don't possess. You're promising Jesus, and you've got Jesus, and you just say, except for these I want you to have all that God's got for you except for my temper. <laughs> That's good. I want you to have all God's got for you except for my mouth. I, you know, I still got a tongue and it gets loose. But I want you to have all God's got for you except for these chains. Yes, right. Except for what's holding me. Because they're not going to hold me forever. That's right. I'm coming out of these chains. But don't you yes. wait and be an almost till I can get them off. That's, good. Yeah. That's the truth. Don't, don't you be an almost because I'm not the perfect example. He is. Yeah. See, a false prophet has to project to be the example. But you're not a false prophet. You're an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're to draw people to Him. You're to minister life to Him. Great and small. It doesn't matter where. If it's at Walmart, it doesn't matter. If it's in the parking lot, it doesn't matter. If it's a coffee shop, it's a hair. It don't matter where it is. People got problems everywhere. Yes. That's right. But because Amen. we're chained up ourselves, we shut our mouth. Come on. When the very fact that you got the same problem they got means you can go to the cross together. It means you can go to Jesus together and you're not telling them, well, <laughs> you go you the way down there. <laughs> One of the kids that's working for me, he done had all kinds. He knows all the lingo. He's had all kinds of mentors and football players and all this stuff. And he says, now, when I get out, he says, but when I get out of all this stuff, when I get out of this, I know the first thing to do. And I stopped him and I said, uh, are you, do you? He says, yeah. I said, so the next thing you do when you get out is you reach back down and help somebody else out. That's right. He said, no, I'm supposed to be a good example. No, you're not supposed to be a good example. Right. You're a terrible example. Amen. <laughs> There's always going to be a reason somebody can look at you and say, there ain't no God. <laughs> you hear me? Yes. Wow. The perfect example is Him. That's yeah. right. oh, Holy. When, when they healed the man at the beautiful gate, he was sitting there, and Peter and John went by, and he, he asked them for alms. That's what it was, money. And, right? That's right. And and so he they say he said silver and gold but such as I have. He didn't let poverty hold him back. 
Right. Amen. And, and so, so he got, he got, he said, well, so, and then he, he said, in the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him and by hand, and he took up and he walked. And he got strength in his legs and he walked. Right? I'm telling the short version. That's right, isn't it? And then all the people come around, and it's one of my favorite verses because Peter looks at him and says, Why do you think? Why are you looking at us as through our great right. power or holiness? And I don't know how many messages I've heard on until you get holy enough, God will use you. <laughs> That's all the truth. If you get your life together, pray long enough, and hold it together, and you know, then God, then the power of God can flow through you. But Peter flat said it wasn't our power and it wasn't our holiness. It was in the name of Jesus Amen. and through faith in his name that this Amen. man stands there whole. And I'm telling you how you minister and not be perfect is you put the accept the chase. I want you just like me. Except I want you to have a happy family. I want you just like me. But I want you to have good children. I want you to be just like me. But I don't want you to have this depression that I've dealt with. But God's going to set me free. Right. Right. Yes. Paul ain't wearing any chains. That's right. He ain't, is he? No. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to have this fancy altar call, people. Boy, I did in the old days. I tell you what. We had real altar calls. I don't know. I think I just got old and lost patience. <laughs> I don't have 15 minutes to wait while some person decides where they're going to come. You can see it written on their face. They know they're supposed to come. They're going to wait, wait. The whole people are waiting for lunch. Go on. And they're not going to come. So I just decided to get everybody. <laughs> Move them along. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No, thank you. We knew where it was. We were down there earlier. We were down there earlier. That's where it's at. We have an acceptance chains anointing tonight. Right, so we'll pray a simple prayer. Pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, all the things that disqualify people from sharing what you the answer you. And Father, we ask in Jesus' name. We don't have to project confidence. We don't have to project the greatness that we don't have. The, the, the Father, we do have you. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would make us able ministers of the good God. My Lord Jesus. My Lord Jesus. My Lord Jesus. Father, we sanctify each person here with Jesus. With his blood, with his spirit, with his power. Father, we, we just profess we do not want to be false witnesses. Though we never lie to anybody, we don't want to be false witnesses. Lord. So Father, we pray that you would show and remove every hindrance. Yes. Keeping us from being real with people. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Keep the circle. I'm going to pray for you first, sister, because I saw that God wants to, he wants, he wants you to be the first one. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I command every chain that holds her back and keeps her from being able to, to and I know that you're able, and I know that you do. And God, God knows that. I hear you saying, you are an able minister, but sometimes things cause you just to draw back a little bit. Because you got some chains and you got some baggage. And, and God said, mm, 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 to set you free from that. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, except for her chains falls off of her yes, in the Lord. name yes. of Jesus. Yes. Except for her chains. Father, I pray all the benefits of all the years she's walked with you yes, and, and shown you to be. She doesn't have to project she's healthier than she is. She doesn't have to project she's got it all together. Father, you just show up. And give those people everything she's got. And except for that change. And except for that change. In Jesus' name. 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 Like you never had a change. Like you nod at the end, like you're at the beginning. Oh, 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 oh. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, we'll pray. Everybody, why we pray here? Father, we pray that you would cause people to come across our paths that need you. 
Father, I'm going to pray even a step bolder than that, that you bring people to our mind yes, that Lord. we know you want us to tell about yes. you. Not because we want to do something, but because we see how much you need them, how much they need you. Well, how much that's, that they got to have it, Father. You need to heal them, and they need to be healed. They yes, need to be Lord. saved, and yes. you're the only Savior. And Father, we pray that you would bring people to our mind. Even tonight, Father. Yes, Lord. And not that we try to force it or make it happen, but you bring them to our mind, Father. And